Hello, everyone, and welcome to an episode of Dear Dr. Fantasy. And I have with me as my very special guest here today, Britain from the channel Some Oki. Dude, hello, Britain. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it's it's a good day. It's it's a good Saturday morning. I've, it is sunny out there, so it's getting a little cooler out here finally. Because Oklahoma weather can't make up its mind. But Yeah. Well, we got we got snow here uh, in Jersey, uh, so yeah, we, you never know. We'd had uh, all kinds of warm weather, and then suddenly we got snow. So you know, just life is it'll throw who knows what at you. But but anyway, uh, we are here to talk about you, not the weather, Britain. So uh, let's get going here. Uh, a, a lot of interesting things are happening on BookTube lately, and I've noticed you you uh, you're engaging with a lot of different people. And in a lot of different ways. And I, I find that sometimes people do like to reflect on our community and, and what's going on, the changes. It's interesting to me to note that you do see a shift in what people do on, on BookTube, uh, as we all fondly call it. And uh, you've made some observations about it as well as, as a uh, content creator, as they call us. I'm not, I'm not a, a huge fan of that term, but <laughs> there it is. Uh, so our influencer is worse. So I guess we'll go Oh, with the content good. creator. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't really want to be in the same, uh, I don't really want to be in the same, uh, running as like a Jake Paul when you say influencer. Yeah. Uh, I don't think either of us are going to find ourselves in a ring with Mike Tyson anytime soon. I, I hope not. I, I mean, he might be 60 years old, but I don't want to be in a ring with that man. I don't think I would do very well, uh, honestly. <laughs> You could probably beat him in tennis. Oh, I could thrash him in tennis. I'm confident. But uh, other than that, uh, no thanks. Um, so, so anyway, I was curious to talk to you about your your take on on our community these days. Before we get into your specific reading journey and all that, uh, because I noticed you've made some videos um, about Oh. it. And uh, what are what are you finding? Is how how old is your channel, by the way, Britain? My, okay, so I started, it's kind of a weird journey I've been on. I started the channel, like, 2019, but I didn't post anything for a while. I did post some stuff, Okay. but those videos weren't very good. So I stopped making them because I was like, what am I doing? Um, so I basically I think we all used have it those for, moments when we question what we're doing for sure. Yeah. so I posted, like, podcasts for a while, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm doing pretty good here. Okay. And then finally, some friends of mine were like, Britain, why don't you just why don't you just do a booktube channel? And I'm like, eh, no, I don't really want or well, I I was kind of like, eh, yeah, I'm not really good at like speaking in front of people. And um, and um, come here, kitty. Um, you know, people were like, dude, just do it. You know, you like books, you like talking about stuff and. I also posted some stuff about movies for a while, and I was like, okay, yeah, okay. And then I watched, like, Brian Lee Durfee and, like, some other people, and I was like, I often say this, I'm like, God bless that man, because I'm like, if he can stand there and just BS about books for, like, 20 minutes on his iPhone, Yeah. what can I say? I have no excuse whatsoever. <laughs> Um, but... But to be fair, he is very well read and he is um Oh oh he's yeah no I'm I'm not saying he isn't I'm just Yeah. I'm just impressed he can stand there and just kind of you know wing it and he gets away with it cuz he's just that entertaining. I think that's what what endears him to a lot of people. <laughs> Yes, yeah. um but to answer your question I've been going on for a year now almost 2 years actually Okay, in January the, the sort of the steady thing that you've been doing now with Yeah this uh, channel. Okay, cool. Yeah. Probably should have just said that, but <laughs> No, no, I wanted the to other give stuff context. is, you know what, the, the cool thing, so you tried earlier, and in your opinion, you, you in some ways, failed, but that's life, isn't it, is we just keep failing better all along until we, you know, either stop or feel like, okay, this time I failed about as well as I can fail, so I think I'll, I'll we'll call it good, uh, but yeah, I mean, that that's, we learn as we go, right? Yeah, no, I, um, I, uh, yeah, I've, I've been steadily posting for a while and I've had some trials and errors, you know, or trial and errors, uh, 
you know, I was going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday for uh -huh. recording videos. That's and hard. then I'm like, I just can't do Mondays. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. because I was just super ridiculously busy at that time. So I'm like, OK, Wednesday, Friday, I'll post videos. And uh, that's worked out for me very yeah. well. Yeah, that's great. I, I can't do more than three a week. It's just three is is I can't even sustain that. I'll have periods when I do three videos a week for a while and then just life gets too busy. And uh, two is really honestly the most comfortable for me. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, it's been good and I have a little community now. It's, yeah. it's pretty not, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I was on, I, I did, I, I did a stream the other day and I'm like, no one's going to show up to this. And then like 10 people showed up. It was awesome. I was That's like, great. Oh, I, was, I was very pleasantly surprised. So I mean, thank just you think to... about you being, you know, hanging out wherever you are with 10 of your friends and yeah, pretty much. That's, that's a crowd really. That's great. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. It's, so, um, and sometimes even the smaller groups can have much more meaningful interaction as well. You know, when I, sure, yeah. I've seen live streams and been in live streams where there's just, so many people and you can't really get to even a fraction of the comments and it, it feels bad because people are leaving comments and you want to acknowledge them and but it's just impossible you know so having a smaller group actually could even be uh you know uh, have it have its advantages i suppose right oh yeah no it's it's, it's pretty good yeah it's, it's a nice good. little community and uh, there's people who like my videos. I mean, there are some of the videos I do that don't do as well. Like I'll, I'll, I'll oh, yeah. do some, like I'll do some like crime books or, you know, I'll, uh -huh. I'll do a reading and not a lot of people will list or see those and people are, and I'm like, that's understandable, you know, like, yeah, but, um, yeah, mo yeah, mostly people are, are pretty, pretty cool with what I'm doing. So it's pretty, it's pretty that's awesome. Great. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you seem to be happy that you've you found a, a niche. You've you've got a group of people that you interact with fairly regularly, and that has to feel very good. I think, right? Yeah, it does. It you know, I mean, there's sometimes I'm like, oh man, could I do be doing more? But I, I think that's inevitable. I mean, we're, I made we're a very bad at being content, aren't we? People, <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, yeah. I made a video about that the other day, and people were like. You know what, Britain? That's just part of being a person. I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny. You, know what? You're right. you can reflect like you just have been. Wow, I have this community. It feels great. These people I can talk to about books. This is why I'm here. And then you can think, compare yourself to someone else or something like that, which is a mistake, and say, oh, well, why can't I be this big or why can't I do this or that? And and we just seem to be very bad at at uh, being happy with where we are, right? Uh, I mean, I recently just got to 500 subscribers, which was, that was that was my that was my big goal for this year. I'm like, I'm all right, I'm gonna get to 500, and um, hopefully I'll get there. And luckily, we did get there. It was it was kind of funny yesterday because my subscriber was going on a journey. It was at like 502. Okay. And then it went to like 499. I was like, crap. Oh gosh, I hate. And that. then it went back to like 504. So I was like, all right, this is I don't get how this works. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen that before where you hit a, a milestone and you put out an announcement and I made it to blank, you know, whatever. And then suddenly like 20 people unsubscribe. <laughs> so it's just that. People are know. like, what are these What are these books he's talking about? Like, right. what? Right. what is uh, this? Or someone sees your announcement and says, oh, wait, I'm still subscribed to that idiot. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. So, but okay, that's, I, I love what you're saying about um, feeling part of something and, and, and the satisfaction and fulfillment you get from that. Um, and apart from that, do, do you, do you, what kind of a, you know, space do you feel is, is booktube healthy? Let me just ask you that. Uh, what's with what you see according do to I think it's healthy. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's, um, I mean, I've, I, I, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, so. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly from what I've seen, most of the people are pretty nice. I mean, there are some like, yeah, there is like some drama from time to time, but like, oh, yes. it's not really like, you know, it's nothing like bad. You know, it's not like, 
It's not like uh, it's uh, like I used to have a gaming channel long, long time ago, and there were a lot of there were a lot of flame wars uh, on the internet over that back in the day. So Interesting. nothing like that. This is uh, far more low key, and and mostly everyone gets along for the most part. I do. I mean, I'm completely biased in this, but I've always felt that people who love books just must be, you know, nicer than the average people. <laughs> so. I, I guess so. It's you know, I mean. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, there are there have been contentious things about books, but you know, it's oh yeah. But generally, it's the people who don't read very many books who 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 uh, hate books, right? It's not the people who read them. So, I, I guess so. Yeah, no, it's um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm mostly I'm mostly fine with I'm 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 quite pleased with BookTube though. It's 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 a nice little community. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> well i agree well let's talk about what brought you here then and uh your your reading journey and some of the formative reads that have been part of your life and you know if you were to explain yourself through the books you've read what would be some of the most important titles so going on the premise that you are what you read britain walk us through uh your reading journey if you don't mind you know it's it's interesting i actually wrote a um i, I wrote an essay for my um for my uh creative writing class talking about this cool and um you're prepared yeah a little bit <laughs> a little bit um but it, it's it's weird like it's kind of weird cuz like my parents aren't big readers you know it's it just kind of it just kind of happened that way like my dad will read like you know self help books and stuff like he likes you know he also likes a lot of religious literature like he likes reading well not just the bible but he likes reading stuff about the bible he's, yeah. he's he, he, he you know he, he likes he's very enthusiastic about that stuff um and my mom like she reads sometimes but you know it's you know it's it's whatever she really feels like you know like uh -huh. she read twilight back in the day she got me to read twilight so okay. that was that was fun right. <laughs> um so how did you become a reader then I, just, I don't know. It's like it just kind of happened. I well, to be honest, I started reading because I always liked illustrations. Uh -huh. You know, I always, I always liked like back. In, you know, I I liked paintings and and drawing or not drawings, but like you know, I would I would I would read like illustrated classics back in the day. Like I read Oliver Twist when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was a big that was a big one for me. It's one of my favorite stories of all time. Yeah. Um. And it was one of those that had illustrations in there, and I would I would look at the illustrations, and um, I really like the illustrations. And then I'm like, well, there's stories in here that are pretty good too. So yeah, there you go. Um, the formative reads. Oh man, um, I read a lot of ghost stories when I was a kid. Okay. Um, was a big fan of those. I um, I really uh. I'm really quite fond of of those. Um, I read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer when I was a kid. Okay, yeah. Um, it was actually for a book report, but I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Me and my dad read it together, and I was like, "Wow, this is really good." Um, but if you mean like fantasy, uh, I read like The Magic Tree House when I was a kid as well, okay. which is which is like a which is like a time travel with like Arthurian influence because morgan lefay's in it for some reason okay <laughs> like she created the magic tree house. it's really it's it's quite strange but um i read that i read captain underpants you know because um that uh i also read what else did i read growing up um i read scary stories to tell in the dark if anyone remembers that that's um oh, i'm sure there would be people who do um that is um basically a bunch of spooky stories and uh really scared me when i was a kid because the illustrations at least in the old version are absolutely um you, you can look them up it's they're really quite um grotesque actually <laughs> wow okay um do you like horror still is that a genre uh that yeah i do i don't read it as much i on on my channel i i usually uh, wait till October to read horror related stuff, but uh -huh. um, spooky season and all. I that. still, 
I, I still like them. Um, um, but yeah, no, I, I also the time machine by H G Wells. I read that when I was a kid. Um, which is what still one of my favorite science fiction stories of all time. Um, and then like when I got in the middle school, that's when I read like Lord of the Rings because people were like, "Oh, the movies." And same thing with Harry Potter, and then I read them, and I'm like, "Oh, these are very good." Oh, so you watched the movies first in both cases. Uh, I kind of read the books and watched the movies at the same time, if that oh, okay. makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, you know the other. You know, yesterday I was at the bookstore actually, and um, there was someone who was talking about. Oh, someone was recommending me to. He was talking to his wife or girlfriend or whoever she was, talking about um Lord of the Rings, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I watched the movie, and it was it was really slow." And I had to just. Oh, the I movie to, was slow. Now I had oh to. I had to. I had to like hold back. A, oh man, if you think that's slow, wait till you read the book. <laughs> but I, I didn't oh, say anything. Oh, okay. It was. It was really funny though. Um, My goodness, I mean. Then, wow. Okay. But then I read those, and that was really what turned me into like a. Like I don't know. I've always been interested in the fantastic, but like those were the books I was like, okay, I, I like this. I like this fantasy thing. Yeah. Well, let's let's for a moment linger on this uh, woman at the bookstore who was saying the Lord of the Rings films were are, were too slow for her. I feel like people have, um, and I don't know. I mean, I, I I'm going to sound like a crotchety old man here, um, but I do feel like that uh, scrolling on the internet, you know, these little things here uh, that uh, people spend half their lives on now just flipping from one thing to another, getting their little hits of, uh, you know, adrenaline or whatever it is they get from it have actually contributed in a big way to the atrophying of our attention spans. Uh, and that, uh, people, even people who are readers. Oh yeah, it's true. Are, I'm, have become I mean... more and more, uh, expectant. Their expectations about stories depend in large part on these influences, these screen influences where something like, it astounds me that someone could find the films, the Lord of the Rings to be slow, but I, I, I wish I could say I'm, I'm completely surprised, but I'm not uh, just because so few, and, and we, we people who read, we are a small minority of readers. I mean, the fact of the matter is that, did you see the, uh, the, the statistics for the literacy rates? They have the numbers for 2022, I believe. Oh, I did not. It, it's actually really, uh, I, I may get some of this slightly wrong, but uh, something like 54% of adult Americans read at a literacy level of uh, sixth grade or below. Jeez. Uh, 54%, uh, sixth grade or below. And then you have the number of illiterate Americans is more than like, the, uh, of adult Americans, or illiterate incapable of reading is something uh, uh, close to actually over uh, 20%. Well, that is, that's worrying. It is um, really worrying. Um, I mean, for, 20% might not sound like that much, but that that's a lot of people. Oh, still. It's, I mean, there are countries in Europe where the literacy rate is a hundred percent. And oh, so wow. for okay. us to have, yeah, I mean, and our literacy rate used to be higher. We're, than it is like, now. we're like the, we're like the leader of the free world. We, we should be doing better guys. Uh, I mean, our literacy rates are declining. Oh, here I have some of the stats, actually. So it's 21% of adults in the United States are illiterate in 2022. 54% oh. of adults have a literacy rate, uh, have a literacy level below sixth grade. Uh, 45 million American adults are functionally illiterate and read below a fifth grade level. That's just, whoa. Okay. And 44% of the American adults do not read a single book in a year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, the numbers are really disheartening. Um, but I do feel that at least some of this is attributable to this thing here. Not my phone, but, uh, you know, the Internet and people. I mean, we are in a period now that some people... You know, if you look at uh, how people are, um, how we've engaged with stories over time, there was, a, of course, a long period of orality where there was no literacy. And then literacy came along. And now a lot of people feel that we're in an age of secondary orality, um, where uh, screen storytelling has taken over as the dominant form. 
and fewer and fewer people are reading. And these statistics seem to bear that out, right? Um, so I don't know. Uh, what what are your thoughts on all of this? I, man, I, you know, I grew up in the generation where, like, I'm basically at the generation right now that the old people are complaining about, you know, the older people, I should say, <laughs> yeah. where they're like, those damn kids, they don't, they don't know what they're doing. Right. But Um, it's not just you guys. It's this of all American adults. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I, This didn't I'm happen sure you got that in when the last you were my two age. years or something. This is a thing that's been building here. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure your dad, when you were my age, was like, damn kids, they don't know nothing. But probably, but with the internet, though, you know, you can do, <laughs> you can do, yeah, good Lord, you can do all sorts of stupid, you know, I was just talking about this last night, well, uh last huh. night is the recording of this, with um, E.L. Montague, who um, is a science fiction writer, was doing my science fiction show, and we were talking about this <laughs> last night, it's like, Man, you know, I, he was like, you know, if the inventors of, like, the 1920s came to today, they would be both amazed and disappointed. Like, amazed that, like, we've grown this far. We've gotten this, you know, technology. You know, we've got these things. We can we can talk like this on, on the Internet. Yeah. Um, but they would also be disappointed because, like, we're still doing the same stupid stuff we've been doing since the dawn Yeah. of time. Well, I'm Just... afraid too that the, the biggest development that gives me major anxiety for our future, and I realize that um, I'm swimming against the current here, but the AI, whole A thing with AI, where, yeah, of course, AI in many ways I don't even realize probably makes my life easier. But the fact of the matter is when people start applying AI in creative realms like art and writing, Mm, mm hmm yeah. I think that we are throwing something very important away, um, that we are surrendering the best of humanity to uh, machines that uh, cannot possibly understand the significance, nor can they appreciate uh, the importance of the act of creation for, for people is what has made us human, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think if we hand that over to AI, then we are really shooting ourselves in the feet uh, in a big way. Uh, and Well, I see yeah, people, no, I... I see people rushing into this like it's the greatest thing ever, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, this is this is very bad. This is very bad. Well, you know, it's it's interesting, and maybe it's just because I'm younger, and, you know, I've, I've read a lot of science fiction. Uh huh. <laughs> um, and I've, I've consumed a lot of science fiction uh, in other mediums. Um, I, I'm actually quite fascinated uh, with, well, I guess it's not technically AI, because it's still just a machine... performing a function it's not really sentient yet but i won't get into that um i'll try not to get too heady today but um Uh -huh. Oh, feel free. Go ahead. um but uh yeah no i i, I do agree that I, I i am concerned about using ai responsibly you know because there's a lot of people who are already using it irresponsibly you know It, like it chat seems gbt from the beginning. I mean, the people who created AI from the very start started by stealing from uh, never mind copyright, anything else. They just started by stealing the writing and the art of actual legitimate people who make their living from this. So Yeah, I I think feel like it started I think Michael illegitimately. Sh Yeah. I think Michael Chabon actually um uh he he sued somebody for using AI like There have been so writing many lawsuits. like him. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's really it's really fascinating. Like I find it really fascinating uh, as at the same time as concerning Yeah. because you know, I've grown up reading like science fiction stuff and you know, it's like we're we're here now. Like We really I've seen are. those I've Yeah. seen those like big Tesla cars riding around and I'm like, holy crap, we're in the future. Yeah, well, we're at a point now where uh, HarperCollins, uh, the publisher, has uh, announced that it intends to sell its author's works to AI. Uh, and that was shocking for me. Uh, because I feel like we ought to be the people involved in the production of stories ought to be the ones taking a stand, you know, saying no AI in creative realms because you're taking something fundamental about our humanity away from us if you're taking away our ability 
And yeah, you can still go ahead and write stories, but how can you compete? Uh, the future, you know, is going to be, how can I compete? I'm thinking as a writer and I'm sure artists Mm -hmm. and stuff feel the same way. How can I, as a writer compete when AI can turn out a story like that, you know, and, I mean, it's definitely uh, it, it's definitely a concern. I'm not and saying most like, consumers ooh, are ooh. not, let's be honest, most consumers are probably not going to care. Uh, whether It's it's produced by AI or by me taking 20 years to write a trilogy, you know. I mean, I I guess I agree with like Simon Pegg. I mean, if you don't know who Simon Pegg is, for anyone who doesn't know, he he's an actor. He's done Shaun of the Dead, the that whole trilogy with Edgar Wright. He's been in Mission Impossible, but he's basically like, you know. A machine doesn't really understand what it's like to be human, <laughs> or at least the machines we're at right now. So, like the like a story a machine can come up with will never be as like profound as one as as people can. Which Well, here's the it. thing, though. I think we're already at a point where AI can write stories that people cannot distinguish between a human written from a human written story. Uh, Yeah, we're we're no. if we're not there. We're just about there, and we will get there. Um, and so the, the 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 issue then is okay because there was a time for the last couple of years where I could easily say, yeah, the, the AI stuff is garbage. I can see it's very formulaic. It's very, but the problem is it, it's getting better. It's getting better all the time. I did a you did a video um, Yeah. wasn't it like riffing on like. Steven Erickson style or something. Yeah. So uh, AP All right. Canavan, a critical dragon, and I did Mm -hmm. a video uh, more than a year ago, uh, maybe two years ago, uh, about whether or not AI could write like Steven Erickson, and it was it was not even close. It was laughable uh, the, what AI came up with when you when you prompt Chat GPT back then at least to write like Steven Erickson, it came up with. horrible just schlock it was awful um it wasn't even close it, it was vaguely recognizable as fantasy but it was incredibly formulaic and very un steven erickson like the problem is i suspect if we did that same exercise today i don't know if it would be perfect but it would be much better than it was um so I mean, yeah, it's that is. It, I mean, it is concerning. I'm not saying it's it's not. It's just I think kind it's of. a, I think it's a, a matter of our, our, I, I think it's deeply existential, honestly. Um, if, if it turns out, and I don't think we're that far away, if AI can write like humans and fool humans into thinking that what it wrote was written by a human, then we've entered uh, a place where it becomes conceivably impossible for human human artists to continue to function uh, and, and unless they just do it on their own, of their own accord. Um, but I, I suspect, and unfortunately, that the vast majority of consumers just don't care. You know, they, they just want their entertainment. They don't think much beyond, I want to be entertained right now. Um, and so if it comes from AI, if it comes from uh, a human who's worked for years to develop their craft, they don't care. You know, they just want to be entertained. Now, there's a minority of us who do deeply care. I, I personally would not read uh, a novel written by AI. I would not consume art written, you know, produced by AI. I, I don't want to support that. Um, that's how I feel. Um, but I don't know. I, I, Uh, I suspect that's tricky. I'm in the minority. <laughs> that's tricky for me. It's Yeah. it's always moral. It's always moral conundrums out there. It's hard. It's hard to cope nowadays. Yeah, I, even, Um, I mean, there is a moral component to it for sure, uh, because... As I said, I'd be like, I want to, I want to see what it would do, but like, this feels wrong, you know. At the same time, ah, you know, yeah, you I, know. I feel like we're just kind of like still monkeys with our curiosity pulling us into places that we ought not to go, you know. Um, but you know. Oh yeah, I have a I have a thing called I, I call it lizard brain, where I just am like, ooh, shiny, you know. Yeah. Or I... uh, John Minton would call it John brain, which is. Uh huh. <laughs> but he was talking about audiobooks, and he summed up like why I don't do a lot of audiobooks. It's good. Nothing. I have nothing against the practice. I mean, you want to use it, or you have to use it because you know you're you're like Raph. You might you know be blind, and you need to use audiobooks. Like nothing against that, but like I just get distracted real easily. You know, I've I've. I'll be listening to something. I'll be like, ooh, shiny video over here. Like, I did this on BookTube, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Well, the, you, these are, these are my, 
anxieties among others for the future. Um, but uh, I don't like AI. I can tell you that right now. I'm not a fan. Fair enough. Um, and, and at least when it's used uh, to replace human creativity, that's where I feel uh, we're uh, making a huge mistake. Uh, but Yeah, but I'll yeah, continue. I would, I would agree with you. Yeah, I, I, Yeah. I, I agree on that. It's, it's concerning for sure, and that's probably understating it. Yeah, but of course, look, we have a long history of uh, machines replacing humans. You can go back to the 19th century with the Luddites, you know, getting mad be and destroying machinery that was taking away their jobs, uh, weavers and that sort of thing, you know, uh, because... Well, yeah, sure. I mean, like even I mean, I, I wouldn't call Tolkien a, a luddite. He, uh, I, from accounts, he did, you know, like He I was think no fan he was, of machinery. Yeah. he was like, I, I, I think it was industrialization he didn't like. I don't know if it wasn't necessarily like machinery itself, but Yeah, it was the marring of the Earth's natural beauty. Uh, they but there's saw definitely like environmental themes and stuff like Lord of the Rings. emphasizing materialism over, you know, a uh, more reverence, let's say, uh, for for life. Uh, Yeah, yeah, like I mean, he he was definitely um, in his own way, you know, uh, um, a, a rebel. Uh, let's say, I guess. yeah, like you know, what are the bad guys doing? They're they're cutting down trees to fund Right. the war effort. Unless I'm thinking back, to, I, I need to reread the Lord of the Rings at some point. I Well, and there you have the the whole scouring of the Shire too. I think that's where he's uh, kind yeah, of closest which the to. movies which the movies unfortunately did not do, which is kind Yeah, of sad because yeah, um. but I feel like Tolkien was most explicitly sending a message in the scouring of the Shire um, when Yeah, when. it's like it's like that in like the Dark Tower. I want to reread at some point in Game of Thrones. So Oh yeah, yeah, all good, worthy rereads. I'm I would say. I'm really bad at rereading though. So not, Well, there's I'm so like many nice, as you say, ooh, shiny. There's so many nice things to read, you know. yeah. I'm always yeah. I'm always I I, I like to truck forward in my in my reading. Like Uh huh. I indulge in rereading like from time to time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's. Uh, Tell me what it's. you're loving these days. Let's 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 move on to a happier topic. What what are you loving in terms of your reading? Whatever you want to talk about, and some of the stuff that maybe uh, you're doing on your channel as well while you're at it. Well, I mean, I uh, I just recently put out a a reading, uh, because I I do that from time to time. I'll be like, do I have any video ideas for this week? Not really. Well, okay, I'll do a reading then. So I did a reading of uh, Blood Meridian on my channel. Um, what what books am I liking nowadays? Um, well, I, I I'm, I'm probably gonna spoil my my number one book of the year so far, but that is Kindred by Octavia Butler. Oh, great. Okay. Um, which I think is a brilliant book. Um, really. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it's about slavery, so it's not gonna be like a heartwarming or you know affirming Oh, I, I, book. I haven't read it, but I've heard, I, I read um, Parable of the Sower earlier this year. Um, I you know I thought about reading that, but I'm like, oh man, it's like I don't really want to. I'm really I'm real neurotic about you know what authors I read, unless it's like a series, you know. uh huh. So anyway, I don't, it's I I read Kindred with my friend Darko from Kindles and Kicks, Yes. and um, it was really really good. I'm, I really enjoyed that book a lot. Well, <sighs> I really liked it. We'll put it that way. He, by the way, he produced a, a wonderful <laughs> review of that. I know he did. It was a brilliant video, and Yeah. I and I I was like, and he's like, "Yo, bro, I'm gonna post up this new video before we do our conversation about it." I'm like, "All right, bro, I hear I hear you." And then he puts it out and it blows up, and I was like, "Oh man, <laughs> dang it!" You know, uh, we we joke about it, um, but it's a great video. It's I mean, it was really interesting talking with him because you know, you know, I'm a I'm a white guy from Oklahoma. He's a black dude from Maryland. And, you know, we talked about it and it was really interesting. And I really like how she plays with, um, I mean, it's pretty cool because it's just like, okay, <clears throat> let's put a modern, modern meaning the 1970s at this point to, you know, the 18th century or not 18th century, 19th century, um, you know, when slavery was, was still going strong. Yeah. And how would they react to that? And it's really, it's really fascinating. I really, I really enjoyed it. It's really sad and, and disturbing, of course, because, you know, 
slavery is is not a usually at least american version of slavery i mean i don't think any form of slavery is good per se but um american slavery particularly was um really awful so it was yeah it was it was uh made into enmeshed within the whole social structure it was racialized it was uh and deeply in, in twisted into the the understanding of religion even and, and science and just every facet of society in a way that uh, I, I think institutionalized in a way that you you probably would be hard pressed to find a, a parallel actually um there's always been slavery in human history unfortunately um and all of it's horrible and bad but that said some of it's worse like than others yeah Yeah, that's that's a good way. I was about to say, like, there's, like, other ones that are worse than some. Like, there's some, like, you know, yeah like, well, we talked about it in your uh, Edan series we did yes uh, we did that we did on my channel. a little bit there yeah Um, but it was really interesting because she reflects on how things haven't changed so much as we might like to think, not... Not we don't have people in bondage, and we're not like you know we don't have a system that's literally biased. Well, actually, actually we do. I, I was about to say I was about to say actually you know what I'm probably gonna get blasted for this in the comments, but we actually we kind of still do. But <laughs> well, I mean it's not that's kind well, of her point though. It's like there's still it's, that it's tension your between black people and white people in America because right. this thing happened, and then we got rid of that thing after we fought a war. But all But you then have to because do. All you have Because to do we is didn't just like get rid of the leaders, like you know, we didn't denazify the you know the South like we did in World War II. So there's still racism, and that's still marring it's us not today. just in the South, it's all over the country. Um, but uh, the fact of the matter is, all you have to do is, is point out the, the numbers. Uh, and the, the truth is, if you look at our justice system, uh, it, it just look at the numbers, don't have to believe me or, or you or anyone else. But the fact of the matter is um, you have a much higher chance of being accused of a crime in, in this country, in, in the United States, uh, if you're a minority, uh, particularly if you're African-American. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a much higher percentage, having been accused of the crime, of being convicted of the crime. You have a much higher percentage of having the maximum sentence thrown at you at every stage through the justice system. It, it, you're kind of screwed yeah if that, you're and that's that's kind of butler's point entirely it's yeah it's yeah that it's that things there's still that tension there and and there's a bias there's obviously a bias in the yeah system that too i mean i mean there's even a scene where she because she's married to a white guy the main character is married to a white guy right and she ends up bringing him back in time i won't go into what happens but i mean right that's not really a big spoiler it, that happens like pretty early on yeah yeah but you know it's like it's you know like she talks about she talks to her parents about her white husband and you know they're kind of like oh yeah white guy whatever you know and she's like it's crazy like it's still it still happens like it even happens with black people and and i think it's the most efficient book i've read all year like like it was one of those books where i felt like there wasn't anything that felt out of place Which is very rare. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, Powerful, I hear too. I Yeah. mean, I mean, the only thing is that like they're a little blasé about like, oh, this weird thing's happening, but you know, that's like a very minor. <laughs> that did irritate me a little, but it, you know, because if I were transported randomly back to like the South during the nineteenth century, I would be kind of like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Why? But, you know, um, I also read Lonesome Dove this year. I did that as a buddy read with um, with Matt from Matt on Books and, and Tori and, and Joanna and Darko joined us again and some other people, Joseph. Um, that was really good. That was that was another one where I was like, this is phenomenal. I'm kind of kicking myself for not reading this earlier. Nice. Yeah. What did you laugh Um. about it? Without spoilers, of course. Um, I, uh, I, I call, I, I really like his eye for, uh, McMurtry, I mean, Larry McMurtry's eye for, um, human, 
drama, as I like to call it. Uh, he's very, he's very interested in people and, um, like, you know, Mike put it, uh, from Mike's book reviews, put it quite well. It's, he does the slice of life stuff really well, where you're really fascinated with what's going on. Uh -huh. It's also really funny. And I also like the bait and switch where it kind of starts out as this kind of lighthearted, you know, you know, good old boys kind of getting, getting around. And then it just turns into like this really sad, you know, tragic thing and wow. you're like oh wow this is like this was not what i was expecting and it's it's really it's really quite it's really it's really brilliant for most of it aside from a couple of scenes but i won't, I won't go into that okay <laughs> cool and what else have you been enjoying um i also I, I bet you'll appreciate this i just recently read the things they carried by tim o'brien and oh, that brilliant. also left an impact on me those yeah. Um that was really good. I uh I really Vietnam War veteran who wrote story set during the, the Vietnam War. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's um it's kind of his it's it's kind of interesting cuz it it I mean, I don't compare people to Vladimir Nabokov very often, but it but um, I mean, not really in like the literary mastery, but like just in how he plays with your perception and uh -huh. just like how he makes you question things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he makes you like question, like, okay, what is going on here? You know, um, really plays with like the suspension of disbelief, I guess, because like there are several things in the story that in in this in the book that um just aren't true to life. Like for instance, he didn't have a daughter. He it, like um well until he was like older, he didn't have kids. Um, huh. but like. It's just like, it, again, it's kind of like Lolita. It's really hard to, you know, I don't, I don't know if you've read Lolita, but it, it's really, um, it's really hard to put to words. But it had like a, it had an effect on me. Ah, huh. interesting. It I might be like, it might be like the closest thing I've, I've encountered that depicts what it's like being in a war. Yeah, that, well, that's because like the thing. It's a I, I don't, I don't think I'll ever understand it because I've never been in the military, and well, I don't plan to go because that's for people far braver than I am. But um, as I like to say, but it's um, but I was blown away by it. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it's interesting to me that um, those of us who write, and you also are writing. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of us who write, uh, and I have written fantasy, and I have battles in my my books, and I've never been in combat. Um, but, uh, I do feel that there is this, uh, an, a layer of authenticity to what somebody like Tim O'Brien is doing. And it's not always the case. Like, t uh, Tolkien famously, of course, was in World War I, but his battles, uh, in, uh, first of all, he doesn't go into much detail with his battles, uh, but they tend to be, um, idealized let's say uh, as in much of fantasy you know you don't get blood spurting and you don't get uh you know guts you know falling yeah, out of somebody and, and slithering onto the ground and all that stuff yeah it's very uh, like like tolkien's version is kind of like you know reading like tennyson you know like charge of the light brigade it's very like not not stirring it's not as stirring as, as that a bit romanticized is, yeah a little bit Though he doesn't like, he doesn't like back, he doesn't like back away from like, you know, the trauma it can inflict on people. Yeah, there's loss and, and all of that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but no, the, but, um, but, but what you get with O'Brien, I think, is this as much as people like you and I who've never been in combat uh, and, and have never served in the military, as much as we can understand that experience, I think Tim, somebody like Tim O'Brien allows us, gives us that window. Uh, he also of, like yeah. I'm sorry I don't mean to interrupt you but like yeah, I, I, he like he also like inverts a couple of attitudes about like war rather it be pro or anti-war right. like you know for instance like you know he doesn't just go war is hell though war is hell is as he says in the book but right. like war is this weird you know strange thing that's like that's bizarre and kind of funny and kind of really sad and life is cheap as Joe Abercrombie would say. Yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, or there's the, one of my favorites of the, of the collection anyway, or if, if you want to, I don't know what you'd call <laughs> things they carry. It is a short story collection. Really. But, um, 
the one where he talks about how he made the decision to go over there. You might, you know, in like other books, you might think, mm, you know, this guy's, you know, this guy's really brave for, you know, sucking it up and going over there. No, he derides himself as a coward for going, you know. That's an interesting point because he gives, I think, one of the best insights I've ever seen into the idea of courage or why a soldier does what a soldier does, why they stay there. Even though you're daily in fear of your for your life, you're afraid of dying constantly. But that is not the soldier's greatest fear. The soldier's greatest fear is actually fear of cowardice, fear of shame Mm-hmm. oneself, fear of of uh, of running away in the midst of combat, and that is what keeps them there. It's not dreams of glory or you know any kind of uh, flag waving sentiment or anything like that. It's just I don't want to pee my pants and embarrass myself here and run away. Uh, and you know that and trying to keep the the the, the person next to you alive, and that's about Mm-hmm. all you got. When people are shooting bullets at you, you're not thinking. Fourth of July kind of thoughts. You're thinking how to stay alive and how to how to even keep yourself there because there's this instinct that's kicking in, telling you to run away, run away. This is danger, right? Uh, and somehow you have to keep your feet planted there and do your job. And there's one fear that is greater than the fear of of death, and that is embarrassing yourself. That, that is the Mm -hmm. insight Yeah. here that I find. I thought that was really It's just like. so brilliant, and the the pressure between those fears. Is something that he makes clear you can never put it down and and Like, that's a big part of ptsd right there like you can you can definitely tell like, like this is a book where like Tim O'Brien is like bearing his soul out on the yeah page, yeah so there's that, and I I, I tend to like that kind of stuff. I I don't know I like I like dark stuff for some reason. I'm a very macabre well individual. i think it's <laughs> important too again i i feel not only so that i kind of as much as I can know what it's like. But I feel like it's important for people to understand when we make decisions to go to war, um, you know, most of us don't have to suffer the direct consequences. You know, we stay here at home. We hear, we maybe watch the news and hear about uh, a soldier getting killed over in another country somewhere far away. And it's like, Oh, that's too bad. You know, and we don't, and then we go on with our lives. Um, I feel like we should as much as possible, know what it's like before we make a decision ever to send soldiers somewhere to, to risk their lives uh, and, and, and not just risk their lives, but have to carry the weight of that trauma for the rest of their lives. Cause that's, you know, we talk about casualties as if it's just the people who were killed or, or maybe physically wounded, but it's the psychological wounds that affect the most. Right. Uh, Mm-hmm. and he really gives us some, I think very important insights into that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's uh yeah, it's 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 really it's a really good book. Um I you know, there's there's some other ones as well. I mean the Adan trilogy Oh <laughs> yes, that we yeah, that how about that one? Yeah, 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 you that mentioned was that this was year. that was pretty Yeah. good. I thought, yeah. I mean, it's Not pretty, too shabby, it's a pretty. I hope. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, Jonathan Strange and Mister Norrell was really good. Yes, you you Um. talked a lot about that one. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. No. It's. I mean. You know. It's a big book. There's a lot to talk about. But it's. It's kind of. You might. You might kind of bristle at this. Um. Philip, because you know you're a fantasy guy. Um. Like you're the fantasy guy. S sorry, AP. But um. Uh. Um. But uh. Like, magic isn't something I focus on as much as, like, you know, uh, in, in fantasy, which might, like, make people aghast, you know? But, like, Get it. Yeah. That's probably uh, why you but, like like, Abercrombie, for example, you know. well, yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm kind of interested, you know, kind of what Le Guin says, the, the feel of the world, the language of the world, I like that, or I'm, I'm more interested in, like, the what 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 do you call it um well aside from the vibe i'm sure there's a much more classier word for it but i'm that Atmosphere, that's atmosphere. yeah yeah something like that like world building and lore and stuff i'm really fascinated with but like jonathan strange and mr norrell really plays with magic in a really fascinating way that i haven't really like she basically kind of goes like okay what if magic was real like how would people react to it Yeah, And it's and a really setting interesting. that is, you know, 
kind of um, Napoleonic era, you know, uh, mm -hmm. like 18th, early 19th century kind of uh, uh, era. But yeah, but there's magic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. You know, you're just like, what are you going to, you know, what are you, um, you know, how are people going to react to this? You know, it's, um, it's, uh, and, you know, it's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a really good book. It, it took me a while because it's, it's a long book. And I, I, I would, I, I, before I, I, I try really hard not to inadvertently scare people away, but like, it's not like, it's not like the densest book in the world, but it is a bit long winded because like that's how they talked back in that time. Right. I mean, like Rita Dickens novel, like, you know, they they like talking. The prose is rich. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I think. um, yes. Um, it, it was interesting reading that. I read Paranese last year and then I read Yeah. Very Dr. different Strange, book. Yeah. um, which actually is kind of funny. I read Paranese around this time last year. So um, there you go. Um, but yes, they're both very different, like in terms of content, but also style, because like, you know, Paranasi is very like not well, more stripped back than Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, for sure. Oh, definitely. Um, and it's written. Uh, I don't think it's a spoiler, right? Uh, just to say how it's written, uh, like uh, in a journalistic way. Let's put it that way. Um, Well, yeah, no, it's in like the first page of the book, <laughs> Paranasi. <laughs> you're going to know that it's a journal from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, no, the it's very um first page. Yeah. yeah, it's it, yeah, no, that was that was a good book. What else did I, I really enjoy this year? Um read a book called Only Killers and Thieves, which I have back there. That's a western set in Australia that I really liked. Oh, cool. Okay. Um I'm I'm sure there's other ones. It's still called a Western, even if it's in Australia. Uh Yeah, it's it's weird. I don't know. It's, don't don't come like don't like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an expert. there should be a name for it. I feel like, uh, like, uh, I don't know the Outback or something, right? Out Or something. Outback Western. Yeah, that's that's actually that's fun. Yeah, I like that. I don't know. What are some other fantasy I read this year? Oh, I just finished uh, Moon Witch Spider King not too long ago, finally. It it took me a couple months, but Okay, cool. um And that that's was that's um by that's the author Marlon uh, uh, Marlon James. James. Yeah. Yeah. Um Cool. So you've been wanting me to read the uh, the first installment there. You were recommending it to me uh, Yes, early. I did. Uh, I mean, and the second one's very interesting too. It's um uh it's really um Yeah, I mean, another reason I started my channel was, like, I there were certain books I had read that not a lot of people were talking about, so I'm like, all right, I guess I'll I'll give it a shot, and I'll, I'll give these books promotion and see if people take to it, and if they don't, they don't. Um, and um, that, that's worked out. There's people who are like, hey, you have pretty fun content, and I'm like, thank you. Um, but yeah, Black Clip, it's really interesting because I've met a lot of people who, um, and I'm actually thought about making a video about this, you know, like how to read it because it's very, and that's why, that's why I recommended it to you because I thought it would be interesting to see your reaction because, you know, you're very used to like, um, because, you know, you're a medievalist. Um, and you know, you've, you've read a lot of like, you know, Beowulf, of course, Oh, yes. <laughs> um, you know, the poetic Ada, I'm sure. And, um, you know, you've read like Tolkien and, and very much in that, like, I don't want I don't know if I'd call it tradition, but like, yeah, I guess tradition of fantasy. I, I would be really interested to see how you react to, to like Marlon James's books because they're very, well, they're both You know, you'll see things that are very familiar, but it's the way he does it that's really interesting to me. Like, it's very, um, I mean, I don't know how much you're versed in, like, African, you know, mythology or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it, and he actually made a good point. You were talking about this earlier, you know, back in the day, everything was oral. He's like, man, people back then, they were, you know, they were more sophisticated and, you know, um, you know more like critical thinkers than we are now because like they had to listen to like the odyssey and have to Yeah. Right. parse the meaning from all that you know before It's a really important point. Yeah, that before doesn't the before homer got the br bright idea of writing it down you know Yeah, that's a really important point, uh, Britain, and that is you can't equate uh, the uh, storytelling mode necessarily with intelligence. There are different kinds of intelligence.
So you have this period uh, for most of human history when stories are told orally, and that involved um, a certain amount of knowledge and it involved techniques for telling long stories. They weren't exactly memorized because they had each story was a unique each was was a unique performance, let's say, mm -hmm. um, and there were the bard or whoever telling the story. It would vary it depending on the audience and the the, the occasion and so forth. Uh, but everybody knew the story. So they had sure. certain kinds of knowledge and, and ways that uh, we've lost. Uh, but literacy obviously brings some advantages. And I imagine even this period that we're in now, this period of secondary orality, um, sometimes I feel like an idiot when I, I'm, you know, I poke away at my phone with my one finger and my daughters laugh at me because, you know, in a sense, I'm illiterate uh, or semi-literate when it comes to using this this newer technology um so there are different way of uh, forms of intelligence you know i suppose right no i i mean I, but like the point i'm making is like it would be it, it it's it would be interesting seeing you talk about like um you know differences of the style because it's very much like it's very much oh. influenced by like african oral storytelling Gotcha. Yeah. So, and, and I often tell people who struggle with it, I'm like, read it out loud. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And you'll really, it's kind of like poetry in that way. It, you know, oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Once you kind of read it out loud, you kind of, you get what it's, you know, going for. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's very, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a weird sell because it's, it's again, not like, like the series just the pitch of it is it's a story about this journey to find this boy. We don't really, um, you get more context in book two about what the boys, you know, what that's all about, but it's basically the journey to find this boy. He's very important. It goes really wrong. You know, that's not really a spoiler that that's, ex that's explained in the very beginning. Um, but, um, the books, all three are going to be, different tellings of the story from mm -hmm. different people and it really plays with that and i think with like an unreliable narrator the best kind of way to do that is is you play with perception uh -huh. you know and you know i read the first book and i was really you know i really enjoyed it i really connected with the characters in that so it was a little hard in moonwitch spider king to connect with some of the other ones because like it was really hard to kind of divorce okay. myself from that and that was also a really interesting experience seeing Thing from this different character's perspective so there's that okay interesting yeah it, it's it's you know it's um i mean i don't and um some people kind of like people are uh, you know are like oh yeah you're you're basically like evie for this series and i'm like yeah kind of <laughs> wow i mean yeah that's that she's no I you mean, she's like, like evie with spear cuts through water you mean you know i saw that at a local book at my local bookshop the other day spear cuts through water and i was like mm, should i pick it up Oh, Maybe you no. would have been happy if you had. You Not know. today. No, I picked up some other books. Um, I've read a few other books um, that I have, uh, mostly before I started the channel. Children of Blood and Bone, for example, uh, that does draw from uh, African uh, inspirations. And then, of course, uh, there's Evan Winter's Rage of Dragons. Uh, I've been so nervous to read that ever since I read Black Leopard, Red Wolf, because I'm like, oh, or, you know, and, I think it's and a Moon, very different kind of book. Moon Witch Spider King. So I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm I I don't want to read it, and I'll be like, this sucks. This isn't Black Leopard. Red well, I mean, <laughs> my here my take on Rage of Dragons, and I did not follow up on it uh, with the second book, but my take on it is that it's it's very action heavy. Uh, and well, that's fine. Yeah. A lot of combat, a lot of preparing for combat, a lot of just action. You know, if you love action, then you might have a great time with it. Uh, I think. I do um, like action. I do like action. Yeah. Well, um might be your cup of tea then. Um, but it is very plot driven, very action heavy. And it sounds like Marlon James is a writer who is much more theme driven, let's say, in his storytelling. Sure. Yeah. It's he's he's very much about the experience, is what I would say. It's not uh, like much, much more atmospheric. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard it be compared to Gene Wolfe, which is interesting. I um I'm I'm actually I I've I've really struggled with Jane Wolf, to be honest with you, because like Okay. Have I'm, you I'm read reading, Book of the New Sun? I have not. I've I've read 
I've read one of his later books, which is called The Land Across, and I was like, this sucks. Like, I don't I don't like this book. <laughs> and then I'm reading The Wizard Knight, which is better, but I'm still kind of like, it's, I, I really, like, I'm always really, one of the things I, I think with a book that's important is that you let things, y you, you allow the reader to sit in the world, uh -huh. you know, if that makes sense. I don't know if you... Like, you know, like Tolkien, you know, like, sure, it takes a – some people might think it's plotting that, you know, he, you know, he wanders around the Shire and then they have to wait around while Gandalf looks for the information, make sure this is the ring. Right. Um, yeah. Which they, you know, condense in the movie. You know, a crash course on the ways of hobbits and all of that. Yeah, yeah. But, like, you know, I think that's important because you get a – you sit with the world. You know, you I get think there's a, payoff for it later too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like Lonesome Dove does this, even, you know, it's not just in fantasy. But like, I really struggle with Wolf because Wolf doesn't do that very much. He's like, yeah, I, I, I find you, it could be different in Book of the New Sun. I know you've read it, but it's not. You, you get thrown into uh, a, a world and you just, you're just like, like you like, figure you understand out. understand what's going on, but you're just kind of like, kind of. Okay. Uh, like, I want to sit here and think about it. You're not giving me that time. It's really frustrating. You you sort um, of figure things out or you don't as it goes along. And uh, yeah, maybe he's not for me. So sorry if if Sam Wise watches this. If I Sam Wise watches this or <laughs> Matt on books, it, it's not it's not jiving with me right now. Maybe I'll read it again because I I know a lot of people say Gene Wolf is good on a reread. So. I'm going to reread Book of the New Sun before I read uh, Earth of the New Sun, I think, is my plan anyway. but Yeah, yeah I heard they're doing a buddy read for it next year. Um, yeah, John is sort of spearheading that. Uh, so that, that should be fun. Good yeah. luck. <laughs> Thank but, you. like, I don't know. I, just, I, I guess I like books that, like, sit with the world. And, like, I mean, Marlon James is good at this, too. Like, he'll have moments where he – I mean, you know, it's weird. Like, in Moonlight Spider King, there's more, like, you know, he's throwing stuff at you because, like – you know, I would say that Black Leopard Red Wolf is more of like conventional in terms of like not I mean it's not conventional at all, but like it says said, you know, instead of like he say to me in in Moonwitch Spider King. Uh -huh. I'm really sorry if I'm not if like I've only been up for like an hour, so um <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> you know what I'll I'll just be like, you know what, read it and you can text me and be like, What's going on? I'll be like, Well, I, I warned you. <laughs> but no. Um, I don't mind that. I don't mind being uncomfortable during a read. Uh, no, but like, it's, 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 it's like, it's such like a, I mean, it is, I mean, it's, it's kind of a lot of it is subjective at the end of the day, but, um, it's, um, it's very much, um, what I, I struggle with Gene Wolf because like, he won't sit with the world. He won't go like, okay, very true. In Book of we're the gonna, Year. we're gonna, we're gonna sit for a moment. And you know, it doesn't do like a Robin out. Hobb or a Tad Williams where you you steep. I haven't in... read Hobb yet either. I, oh, you Derry haven't. gives me Derry gives me hell for that. <laughs> well, if you do like uh, a nice slice of life, uh, steep in the world kind of thing, then I suspect that you will probably enjoy Realm of the Elderlings. Cause... I mean, I, I I like fast paced stuff too. I mean, you know, I've I've read like. I mean, it, it, it's it, again, it's kind of a it's kind of a just subjective thing, I guess, which I mean, I yeah. I get kind of bugged when people say that because it's like, all right. Yeah, that's kind of with a lot of things. True. <laughs> you know, you're just like, good Lord. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, some people like Lord of the Rings and some people don't like Lord of the Rings. That's just the you know, that's the gist I, of it. So uh, speaking of. You know, things that you might want to read, like Realm of the Elderlings, uh, to make Derry happy, hopefully. <laughs> and also no, I do want to read that at some point, though, because, you know, it's it's because, you know, a lot of people like it. It's popular. You know, I mean, it took oh, me a while. To get to... it's, it's top three for me. Uh, I mean, you know, it's kind of like the first law. I mean, I kind of I kind of pushed it off for a few years and then I finally read it. I'm like, okay, this is great. I feel like an idiot for not reading this earlier. <laughs> so what are you looking forward to? Let's, let's finish with that. What are some of the things in that you'll be covering in the future of your channel, things that you're looking forward to reading that sort of thing. 
what am I? Oh God. Um, well, you know, I've, st I, I, I generally start thinking about what I'm going to read in like 2025 and like, October maybe September okay. at earliest because like we're I don't November know. now so fair we're game. in November now so I've been thinking about it a little bit yeah uh there are a couple books I would like to get to like um there's uh like it's it's been kind of um it's just been kind of formulating like I I'm kind of hoping to go on a pre-Tolkien uh a kick next year so oh, okay Okay. I'm hoping to like pick up some books that were written before Tolkien or not like before Tolkien's time. I guess they were like some of them will be um in some of them were peers with with Tolkien, I guess, like okay. uh Lord Dunsany and and Hope Merely with um Blood in the Mist and King of Elfland's Daughter respectively. I'm hoping to read those. Cool. Um I'm hoping to do Gormenghast next year. I was going to okay. start with that this I year i just i hope to get to it next year as well yeah i just didn't get to it unfortunately because one i read jonathan strange and mr norrell took much longer than i thought for me to read and yeah. then i read moon witch spider king and i'm like well this is also pretty dense not gonna read it <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 shove it over to i was gonna read it this month i was gonna read titus grown this uh -huh. month and then i'm like nope that's not gonna work yeah, cool. You're going to go back to the oldies. If you want to go back even further to an author who was instrumental in inspiring Tolkien, then you could read William Morris as well. Yes, I've, I've heard of William Morris. I'll, I'll uh, Perhaps I'll give him a, a shot at some point. But um, it's ah, – man, I just ah, – um, what else am I going to read? Uh, well, I'm going to read more Marlon James because I've done his fantasy stuff now. I have a brief history of Seven Killings. I'm thinking about doing that. Cool. And I'm I'm I, I like trying things on my channel. Like this year, I I did a I did a little show called um, What's the Big Fuss, which is where I had my beloved audience give me a a a book that is popular for whatever reason, and I was going to read it. Okay. That was a terrible idea because um, I am really <laughs> bad at, at delivering. I did the first, and like if I didn't care for it, I would stop it. And if I and if I liked it, I would keep reading it. It just didn't pan out. So I I'm like, what all right. For it? I read the fourth wing, and I was going to read Malice, but I just didn't get to it. And I'm like, okay. And then I I made a community post. I was like, "Hey guys, sorry, I'm just gonna stop this because this just isn't working." But you're gonna resurrect it. Maybe we'll see. Uh, but you maybe did someday. Read not, not right now. Not right now. But maybe someday I'll, I will. Okay. But okay. um, I might do more audio books next. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this thing they do called uh, immersive reading. Oh yes, yes. Um with Brief History of Seven Killings cuz there's some people who've told me that like hey Marlon James is quite good read aloud and I would agree. Okay. So um I I I'm curious to see what it will be like if I listen to it as well as read it. So we'll see how that goes. Um what else? What else? Uh The Broken Sword I'm hoping to read by Paul Anderson. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which, um, funnily enough, came out the same year as uh, as Fellowship of the Ring. So I'm yeah, I'm really... you're doing a lot of older stuff. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, there's there's some newer fantasy stuff I I I'd like to do. Uh, let, let me let me look around. Um, let's see. Uh, hmm. What else? What else? Uh, let me. I have a list of books here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look here. See if I find anything. Well, that's a lot already. That's uh, already a pretty busy year for most people. No, it's yeah. No, it's yeah. It is. It's um. Uh, it's. I'm scratching myself here. Um, there's pro. I mean, there's um probably gonna read some more like crime novels as well. So there's probably that. Uh, what cool. what else? Um, I, I swear I'll probably read a modern. I I did start um Josiah Bancroft's um oh books of Babel, books of Babel. I was gonna read that series this year, but let me tell you this this year's been really sucking up a lot of my time, so I just haven't really um been. So how, really... You started Sen a sentence then. I, I read the first book, yeah, and I okay. I liked it. I didn't I didn't love it as much because you know let me tell you, Alan is Alan from Alan Zandria is very good at at reading 
He's really good at hyping you up about things. He is and very good. one of the best. And then and then I and then I and then I read it. And I'm like, okay, this is pretty good. You know, this, this uh -huh. is fun. Um, I just didn't I get around to the rest. That series. Maybe I, I, maybe I I'll maybe I'll continue series. with it. I don't know. I don't know yet. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm considering checking out the language of the night by uh, Ursula K. Le Guin. Okay. Because I picked that up. That I've been wanting to read Le Guin for years. I just never got around to it. Um, and I've gotten like, uh, like people have like, you should read Earthsea. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll do that. I mean, um, I would join that uh, in that recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Spear. Actually, I I, I just looked back. Um, this this book right here, Spear by Nicola Griffith. Okay. A lot of people, a lot of my my friends, uh, Liam and Raph, were telling me about it. I'm not, I'll admit I'm not a big, like, Arthurian guy, but, like, I've heard it's really good. So, I've heard it's, like, okay, you know, and it's 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 interesting. Um, though, I, Liam, I have softened. Liam and Raph are recommending it. It's probably older than, I'm guessing. Oh, no, this came out, uh, this came out, um, I think, like, either last year or, like, two years oh, ago. Oh, so it's very recent. Okay. All yeah. Right. So, that, it's new. But, um, cool. yeah, I mean, it's, I've just kind of bounced all over the place. I, you know, it's, it's usually what I do. Uh, that sounds great. It sounds like you're, probably, you're, you're, you're going to have a, a fun 2025. I certainly hope. I, so. I hope so. I mean, you know, I, I, it's, it's kind of weird. You know, I have like these grand ambitions for the year and then they just oh, kind of, <laughs> and like, as I'm like, I'm going to read Gorman Gas. I'm going to read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. And then I'm going to read Moonwitch Spider King. Yeah. I read two of those books. I managed to get to two yeah, of those. Good, two for three is so. A good thankfully, I mean, you know, so I, you know, what? It's actually been much better than I thought. It's just like you know, I just, I'm really hard on myself, as I imagine we all, yeah. <laughs> so are we all. But well, Brent, don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, it, it's uh, been a real pleasure chatting with you, and uh, I, I love that you're part of this community. I love what you're contributing, and it sounds like you're going to be reading some really cool stuff uh so i wish you the best with all of it and everybody go check out britain's channel it is called some oaky dude and uh he does all kinds of not only reflections on his reading but some great conversations over there as well oh you're always talking to somebody oh. aren't you britain oh oh yeah that that reminds me there's some there's some other stuff um uh, you know like i said i was gonna do um uh, -huh. uh the uh i'm also doing a new series on my channel I'm going to announce it at the end of the year, but it's basically about fantasy, kind okay, of like cool. my science fiction series I'll be doing. Something but, to look um, out for. Yeah. Very, very much looking forward to that. I'm hoping that'll work out. <clears throat> well, I hope I so might too. involve you. I might involve you in those shenanigans, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Well, let's see what happens then. Yeah. I'm intrigued. But yeah, sorry. But no, but you no brought problem. that up. So yeah. <laughs> got that up. I'm like, Oh yeah, that. Yeah, so there you go. Perfect. Well, I'm glad you you uh, snuck that in there. And uh, once again, everybody, check out Britain's channel. And uh, thank you for watching. And until next time.